Hi guys, this is Dave Marshall with the RC Air Marshall YouTube channel and welcome to part three of the Spectrum AR636 programming series. We're going to be doing an overview of the Spectrum programming software. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, so the first thing we'll need to do is go ahead and open up the Spectrum programmer software. So let's go ahead and open up our start menu. We're going to scroll down to S and just click on Spectrum programmer. That should open it right up for us. All right. So right now I'm already logged in, but uh, you know what we'll do is we'll go over a couple of different things here up at the top. Now, uh, I'm going to go ahead and log out just so you can see how this, uh, how this process works. And we'll go ahead and look at the About Spectrum Programmer 2. Because uh, what you want to do is make sure that you're running the latest version of the Spectrum Programmer software, which is version 3.4, as we can see here. You can go ahead and close out of that. Now, one of the things that you're going to want to do as well is create a My Spectrum account. I've already got one, so we will just put in my password here. However, if you do not already have a Spectrum account, you don't need to go to My Spectrum to do it. You can actually create an account right here by pressing the button, and it'll bring up a little dialog box where you fill in all the, uh, all the information, click register, and it will create the account for you. But let's go ahead and go back there and get logged in. All right. So now we can see that we're logged in. Okay. So in the Spectrum Programmer, we've basically got two panes of the software. Uh, we won't really be messing with any of the stuff up here. That's just our account and help. And the only thing that's in the help is the About Spectrum Programmer. All right, over here in the left-hand pane of the main window, uh, we've got our dashboard, we've got models, software update, model settings for exponential, dual rate, gain and priority, mixing, flight mode switch, aircraft type, surface setup, and port assignments and failsafe. Now, your dashboard is going to be based on the model that you are actually looking at right now. Uh, currently, we're taking a look at my setup for my Avanti S with safe. So we can see that uh, in flight mode one, here is all of my settings for roll, pitch, and yaw. It basically just gives you a quick overview of the settings that you've got for the particular model that you have selected. All right, over here under models, we can see all of the models. We can import models. We can add new models. Uh, we can also... Uh, change between models. So say I want to go from Avanti S over to uh, P47. Uh, we'll just select that and then we can go into edit. We can change the picture. We can tell it what type of receiver we're using, etc. Uh, so that's uh, how we manipulate all of, uh, all of our model settings. And also we can go in here and click the more and we can export, we can duplicate, we can reset back to defaults. Uh, that's just a quick overview of what we can do under the models uh, setting. Under the software update, if we had a receiver um, connected, that was that's where we could go and update the firmware for that receiver, and we'll get into that here in uh, later on in the series. Under model settings, uh, this is where we can go and we would modify the exponential and the dual rate. Uh, as you'll see, whenever we start, uh, whenever we get to the part. Uh, later in the series on model setup. We're not actually going to mess with those, but those are things that we can modify uh, within the AR636 receiver uh, just in case you know you want to do it there instead of in your radio. I recommend doing it in the transmitter, so uh, we won't uh, be messing around with exponential or dual rate uh, very much under the model settings of the Spectrum programmer. However, it is there, uh, and what you'll see is that for each of the model settings, uh, so under exponential, I've got roll, pitch, and yaw tabs, right? Because each one of those has three flight modes. So you'll see under here, under exponential, I've got flight mode one, I've got flight mode two, and I've got flight mode three under roll. Uh, under pitch, I'll see the same thing, and under the yaw tab, I would see the same thing. So for each of the three axes, that are affected by uh, AS3X, we have independent settings for three different flight modes that we can assign to a switch on our transmitter. Now, the same thing goes for dual rate. 
Uh, if I want to set up dual rate, uh, I can do that here under the flight modes uh, in the receiver so I don't have to do it in the transmitter. However, I like setting up all my dual rates in the transmitter, so again, we don't do that here. But you'll see again, under dual rate, we've still got roll, pitch, and yaw tabs, each of those with flight mode one, flight mode two, flight mode three. Um, and we're going to see the same thing with gain and priority. Now, once we get into uh, setting up the models, we'll go into a, a deeper discussion of exactly what each one of these means. But again, you'll see for gain and priority, we've got roll, pitch, and yaw tabs, as well as our three flight modes. So for each flight mode, we would set, you know, different gain, uh, depending on what we want to do for each of those. This is where we go and set up the gain for each axis of AS3X. And finally, we get to mixing. Uh, this is where we can go in and, and set up mixes in the receiver uh, for things like mixing elevator with your throttle or things of that nature. All right, our flight mode switch. Now, whenever I was up here uh, talking about, you know, roll, pitch, yaw, etc., cetera, uh, dual rage, gain of priority, and we have flight mode one, flight mode two, flight mode three, the initial setup down here, uh, where we set up the flight mode switch, this is where we would assign which uh, channel in our transmitter is the switch going to be assigned to. So for this particular model, uh, it doesn't have a gear, so I've assigned the flight mode switch to the gear channel, um, but we could also assign that to aux 2, 3, 4, or 5. And that's something to keep in mind whenever we're talking about an AR636. While it is a six channel receiver, that's six physical channels as well as three additional channels that we can, uh, that we can assign things like, uh, like the flight mode switch or something like a panic button. So there's a lot more that we can do, um, you know, outside of the six channels. Uh, also under initial setup, we've got our uh, aircraft type where we can set up dual aileron or normal. Now this is only for safe receivers, which is what we're going to be dealing with. If we had a an AS3X only receiver, we'd have a lot more flight modes. Uh, our surface setup, this is where we would go to set up things like our, uh, our control surfaces. So we can set up our ailerons, we can set up our elevator, and we can set up our rudder here. Now this is where we would go and set up things like reversing. Uh, we could set up our minimum and maximum throws uh, based on uh, you know what we uh, what we expect out of the the control surface. Now because AS3X controls everything um, with your aircraft, we want to set all of these settings in the receiver as opposed to setting them up in the transmitter. It's a very important distinction, and we'll get to that when we get to the model setup, but right now we're just doing an overview of the software. All right, and the next thing is port assignments and fail safes. You know, uh, we can set up, say, for example, we uh, want our ailerons to be on port two, so we'll set them up on port two, three, four, five, or six. Port one is always our throttle. All right, and we can't uh, we can't change that. So you know our ailerons are already set to port two, elevator already on port three, uh, rudders already on port four, and everything else is unassigned. So our gear, aux one, aux two, three, four, and five are all unassigned at this. Point. And the fail safe is how the uh, how the receiver is going to respond to a loss of power, whether it's going to go into its safe mode or it's just going to hold its last position or it's going to go to a preset position, which is the position that you had uh, your sticks and throttle when you bound the receiver to the transmitter. And that's pretty much all there is to it for the Spectrum Programmer software. And that's pretty much all there is to the Spectrum Programmer software, guys. Uh, this wasn't uh, this video was not intended to show you how to use everything, but just a brief overview of the different features that are available 
and where we're going to go to manipulate those in later parts of the series. Be sure to stay tuned for part four, which is an overview of the Safe Model Builder program. We'll see you then.